Hi everybody! Today we want to repair a Gamepark GP32 handheld. But before we start with the repair, let's check some facts about this nice handheld. The GP32 was developed by the South Korean company Gamepark and was released in 2001. It should be a competitor to the handhelds from Japan. After the release of the GP32, the homebrew community easily found a way to run own software on the system. This induced Gamepark to release the free launcher and an official software development kit to support the homebrew community in writing games and emulators for the system. Because of this, the system was one of the most famous handhelds for emulation and homebrew software at that time. There were also 28 commercial games released for the GP32 during its lifetime. Well, let's talk a little bit about the system specifications. The system itself uses a 32-bit Samsung ARM CPU with a clock speed of 133 MHz, a 3.5-inch TFT display with a resolution of 320 by 240 pixels, 8 MB of SD RAM, 512 KB of flash ROM for the firmware, this is what we will repair in this video, and it uses smart media cards with up to 128 MB as storage media. The system was available in different versions. The NLU, the non-light unit, which we will repair today. The FLU, the front light unit, which has a front light TFT. The BLU, the backlight unit, which has a backlight TFT. And later they also released the BLU Plus units, where the manufacturer of the TFT was changed. However, this induced some incompatibilities with the older systems. About 32,000 handhelds were produced until Gamepark was split into two companies in 2005. Gamepark Holdings, which produced the successor of the GP32, the GP2X, and Gamepark, which developed the never-released XGP. So let's come to the repair of the device. If we switch the handheld on, you can see that nothing happens on the screen. No intro, nothing. We will then see some horizontal lines. This is an indication that the flash ROM with the firmware is corrupted. To get the GP32 working again, we have to replace the corrupted flash ROM with a new chip that contains the firmware. The new flash ROM is a SST39VF040, which replaces the original Atmel AT49BV040. This chip needs to be programmed with the latest firmware from the internet before it gets installed. And because my programmer does not have an adapter for the chip's form factor, I have to solder it to an adapter before I can program it. But before we can start, Let's open up the device.
right below the Samsung CPU that you can see on the top is the faulty flash ROM chip. We have to desolder it before we can replace it. But first, let's prepare the new replacement flash ROM with its new firmware. As I already mentioned, I have to solder it to a programming adapter for my EEPROM programmer. To do this, I will first put some tin onto the pads of the adapter, clean it up a bit to be sure that there are no solder bridges between the pins, and then use my hot air station to put the replacement ROM onto the board. We have to download the latest firmware version for the GP32. I will use the original European firmware here. You will find the links to it in the description of this video. Extract the downloaded archive file and then you should find a subdirectory which contains a binary file which is the firmware of the GP32. In the EEPROM programming software be sure to select the correct type of the replacement chip on the top left, the SST39VF040 and verify that it is correctly detected. Then load the downloaded firmware file into the software and program it to the chip. Since there are some components next to the corrupted flash ROM, I prepare the desoldering of it with some captain tape. This should protect the board and the surrounding components. Then finally desolder the corrupted flash rod. Thank you. 
can now desolder the newly programmed flash ROM from the adapter board and put it into the GP32. And finally, remove the solder flux with some alcohol. Let's put everything together again and hope that it works. And that's it, it's working again. So finally, let's start the game. Thank you for watching my first repair video. I hope you liked it and maybe we will see us again with another repair video in the future.